7. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee. Now, what he did is cast them out, and they all got back over to be the United Nations. Is that a reasonable comment? You can see what I'm saying. Because they're not standing in the United Nations to say, praise the Lord. They're using trickery, theft and deception to achieve something that's not going to be pleasant. Seven nations greater and mightier than now, when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee. Is that about to happen? Because that's why he's exposing them. He's lifting the lid. I'm not doing this. Darren's not doing this. We're working as Christians. We're, I'm a farmer. All of this, I was blank as no one's business. But when I got born again and then the Holy Spirit started to teach me, that's why I'm standing here today. Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. So you're told to go at them, but you can only go at them in the Spirit. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them, neither shall they make marriages with them, thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall they take unto thy son, for they will turn away your son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. So suddenly you've got a problem. God's going to go against that United Nations, but if you're with them, so he will go against you. So pick which side you're on. The pastors say, particularly in this town, hey, we don't get involved in government. That's not our business. Well, what's that scripture saying? It's saying the government of Almighty God. And I didn't pluck it out of the Quran. It says, for unto us a child is born. To us as Christians, that person is Jesus Christ. Unto us a son is given given by the Father to us to honour and not reject. The United Nations has rejected him. There's not one mention of Almighty God in the United Nations. But they do all this spiritual stuff in the meditation room. And it's got nothing to do with Almighty God. And his government shall be upon his shoulder. Now what was on the shoulder of Christ? The cross. And a lot of preachers in this country have lost the cross. Oh, we don't get involved in government. God's telling you you have to, whether you like it or not. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. Now here's where they took the trick. They know the person who represents this new world order in the spirit has got to be from the throne of David. Can that be a Muslim? Why? Because no Muslim will admit to the throne of David. So we're looking at two players. Solomon, the son of David, or Christ, the son of David. Pick which one you want. One will take you into Freemasonry and to the New World Order. The other will take you to freedom and protection. Which one do you want? Christ. And here it says, and upon his kingdom to order it. Now here's where they get their perversion, the new world order. They're taking it out of this scripture and perverting it. They're really good at that. They love trickery stuff. Can you see the glass move? Watch them. To establish it with judgment and justice. Now that's not the new world order judgment and justice because you're not going to get any of that. But you're going to get it from God Almighty. Is Almighty God still in your Commonwealth Constitution? Yes. Are you going to let him take him out? No. no. Well all you have to do is tick the uh, Republic thing and he's gone. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now who should be on the almighty God's side in the Commonwealth Constitution? I will answer you. Every person who names the name of Jesus Christ and those who are still coming in.
One nation under Almighty God. That's why one nation in Australia failed, because in its origin it was one nation under Pauline Hanson. She had actually, unknowing to her, trespassed on God's purpose. Ezekiel 37.22 says, And I will make them one nation in the land. That's God's promise. Do you agree with that? Yes. Because it's the opposite of the United Nations. Yeah. Upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And there shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Now that's bigger than what we're showing here, but it's enough to show you that when one nation, Australia, trespassed into that title, they trespassed into God's purpose. And that's why it's dead as a doornail. If they alter it to one nation under Christ, watch it rise from the ashes. Is that a reasonable comment? Yes. Because the executive of one nation in Western Australia today is four people. Three of those are Freemasons or involved in Freemasonry. Where's it going? To Dry Gulch Gully. Can they all get out? Yes. Of course they can. Because it's only a matter to say, we give up Solomon, we're picking Christ. Because that's what's going to be the courtroom issue. One judge, he said to me, most assured, if we made it a trial of the issue, what would be the issue? I said, do you want a Masonic government or a Christian government? Because I'm not giving my kids to you. That's a fair statement, isn't it? Yes. They can't bark because they know what I just said was true. Solomon, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter and the nations. These are some scriptures relative to this. City of David, we're going back to there. And Solomon, 1 Kings 3 verse 1, and Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David. So can Jerusalem be clean while she's there in the spirit? I'll ask the question again. Because we've got a lot of Australian Aussies going over there to Israel and they're not getting anyone born again. I wonder why. Because she's holding the city. Until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Now all they're doing Masonically is trying to build Jerusalem. But they're building it Masonically. And Maggie Thatcher, when she retired, made this monumental statement. I saw it on TV. She resigned, she stood up and she walked away. This is a woman saying this. More strength than the men. And then she walked back to the podium. She said, before I leave, I have one statement to make. You cannot build Jerusalem in Brussels. Solomon and the Nations, 1 Kings 11. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidomites and Hittites, of the nations. So the spirit of Solomon in Freemasonry is putting these nations into purpose to get them into unity to attack us. Are we ready for this attack? Are we ready for this attack? Yes. Not really. <laughs> Hallelujah! Let me rephrase the question. Are you getting ready for this attack? Yes. yes. <laughs> Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will take away your heart after their gods. God, Solomon clave unto these in love. Wrong way. 1 Kings 7. And his house where he dwelt had another court within the porch which was of the like work. Solomon made also a house for Pharaoh's daughter. Now remember, this is the one that Moses said, hey, I'm out of here. I was travelling back, from a small digression. I was travelling back from England one time when I had to do a couple of hours stopover in Manila. Myself and a farmer from Kyabram are sitting in the foyer of the hotel waiting a couple of hours to get to the next flight. When I said to him, what is a farmer from Australia going to England for on his own? You will be on Masonic business, are you? And he said, I am. I said, let me tell you a little funny story. 